Good afternoon, folks. What you're about to see is two videos combined from our Planet and Sun series from years ago. It's still relevant today and informative at any stage of your observer journey. Enjoy. There is an alternating current to the solar system. We briefly discussed it in our previous episode, but here we will describe it much more clearly so that you can hopefully visualize the solar system circuit in a way you have not yet considered possible. Despite how things might seem with the light and solar wind constantly streaming outward, there is not a direct flow of current only outward from the sun. In the same way that Earth's fields loop outward and back down to Earth, including the L-shells that span the Van Allen belts and the plasma tubes you likely heard about in the previous years, field-aligned plasma tubes. These fields are helping to return the Earth's ion wind back to the ionosphere, atmosphere, and geomagnetic system, in addition to their own outflow and inflow profiles. Now, while portrayed as lines, we are actually inside of a full shell, with the magnetic connections being as much Birkeland currents as tubes of magnetism. However, when it comes to the large-scale connections, the ones at the distance of space, it is normally confined to these structures, at least in how variably their plasma movements can be tracked, allowing us to know there are all these different vectors indeed existing. So let's now recall the individual magnetic connectivity of the planets to the sun, but let us do so from the macro scale perspective of a spiraling electromagnetic system circuit, rather than the direct outflow depicted here. And now we better understand the interplay of electric action between the planets and the sun by remembering how complex of a structure the heliosphere truly is. In towards the inner system, where the planets are found, it is a bit flatter and a more readily recognizable wavy electric field. It is through that sheet, the wave, that the planets do orbit, with our flat orbit managing to offer both hemispheres of the solar wind magnetism due to its own undulation. Now let us recall that while the solar wind does indeed go out in all directions, that's the red arrows, the magnetic fields and organized current is a full system cycling back to the sun, that's the blue, just in the same way Earth's fields capture and bend our ions back around into our system and circuits, this likely happens in the far reaches of the solar system as well, where the solar wind may actually have a route back to the sun. One wonders how much actually escapes for good. But back to this outflow versus inflow, when it comes to the overall interplanetary magnetic field, we do have to ask, where are the currents connecting at the Sun? It turns out the answer was likely handed to us in a recent solar Rosby wave story, and it goes beyond just the coronal hole IMF connections, where counter-rotating cells line the Sun, just like on Earth. And how does this work electrically on Earth? Well, let's look from the North Pole at the counter-rotating cells south of Alaska and see that the lows send up the current to the ionosphere, highs drop the current to the ground. It is these counter-rotating cells that allow us to track the global electric circuit. So back on the Sun, where we know the large-scale magnetism is much more dominant over the activity, and where we know there must be both outflow and inflow regions, why would the cells on the Sun not be behaving the exact same way? True enough, at this stage there is no way to know which is which. The flow might be opposite of what is shown here, but it is more than enough to understand where the fields are returning to the Sun on either side of the undulating current sheet. So, now that we know that every planet connects to an electric circuit back in the corona and photosphere of the Sun, it is easy to see how sunspot and solar flare activity could be affected by planetary conjunctions, and why confining one's analysis to gravity ignores not only the statistical correlations, but the primary driver of sunspot and solar flare activity, electromagnetism. When we recall that study of activity at the top of coronal loops being able to affect the flare activity below, it becomes abundantly clear that not only is the statistical correlation of planetary geometry's effect on solar activity a real relationship, but if it were not so, it might be a confounding puzzle given how electrically connected we are. Jupiter, 
As if it wasn't a wonder already, Juno has certainly reignited the imagination. In the introductory episode, we looked at modulation of various solar cycles and activity phenomena associated with planetary geometry, and since Jupiter's 11-year orbit with a sprinkle of Saturn was hypothesized in 2008, 2012, and in the most recent related manuscript from 2018, we'll start there. It is noteworthy that in 2016, we also covered the hypothesis that slight variations in the solar cycle were due to Earth and Venus being the sprinkles to Jupiter's influence rather than Saturn. But we also showed that doubt had been expressed. In fact, quite a bit of it. But not about the statistical correlation. It is found to be about gravity. Gravity is the only avenue of investigation explored, and to be sure, there is absolutely no chance in this universe or any other that Jupiter's tiny tug on the sun is going to do it. But here is where a lesson in space weather could do large-scale physicists and mathematicians some good, because here it's not just about gravity. Earth isn't the only magnetic sphere in this system. Jupiter's fields are 10,000 times stronger. The suns go out past Pluto. Every planet is magnetically connected to the sun, shown in black and white dash curves on the endless spiral, and traced back to coronal holes always to coronal holes, where the fields are shaded darker to show that they stream out to connect to the planets, while the bright white lines would be the magnetic fields that loop back down to the photosphere. The interplanetary connection fields may be easier to see if we reverse the color, making the internal loops black, and the white lines being the interplanetary fields connecting to the planets, coming from white coronal holes. The sun's fields are paramount to the electromagnetic environment of the entire system. By the way, those are not concentric circles in any color, but spirals, helical outflows of magnetism. It is no wonder that magnetic portals connect the planets to the sun. A better name could have been chosen by NASA, but it's what we've got. And for each of the planets and comets and everything else in the electric field of solar wind, there are flux transfer events indicating that direct connection to the sun exists. On Mercury, it happens very often, while on Earth it is every eight minutes, and on Jupiter, it is a significantly longer scale, still far less than a day, though. Same for Saturn. It is remarkable just how similar the spheres in this system behave electromagnetically, despite their vastly different chemical compositions. And it is in the interaction with the Sun, magnetically, that we find the potential here for there to be a modulating factor beyond just gravity. Whether it's NASA or professors or the ESA, there is no question that in addition to the outflowing fields, there are return segments as well. Indeed, half of those arrows are pointing back towards our star, and which hemisphere that dominates flips with the 11-year cycle. The field flow can also be shown in relation to the heliospheric current sheet. You see two segments of outflow, two of inflow towards the sun. The positive dominance plus signs in the outflow and the minus signs are the flow back to our star. This represents Earth crossing the heliospheric current sheet as the sun rotates one time and we experience each magnetic sector twice. Let's also remember that all planets emit ions themselves, mostly negative except for Saturn who refuses not to act like a star, but on Earth that's oxygen, negatively charged, and who really knows what that is at Jupiter? The planets are all connected to the sun through these magnetic portals. They exchange plasma, and these connections don't disappear just because you have flipped solar hemispheres in the heliospheric current sheet. Further, by chemical emission of the planets, one can see numerous Birkeland pathways, field-aligned currents of that material, back to the sun during the return field experiences. The point is that these planets do not just interact gravitationally, and if we're talking about perihelion, the closest point in orbit to the sun, then electrical loading modulation over orbital periods becomes important to activity. It is already widely believed that the magnetic fields of the sun are what is driving the sunspot cycle of 11 years, and there is utterly no way to argue that those fields are disconnected from the planets. See you next time, and be safe everyone.